So Roth versus regular, the question of the decade. So what I've got on screen here is spending game. And up here at the top are the first two scenarios for the Roth versus the pre-tax. So from a characteristics perspective, I tried to keep this very simple. And I have a 35 year old who's gonna work till age 65 uh, making $150,000 a year and living on 72 starting adjusted for inflation each year. So our lifestyle number is 72. At retirement, our lifestyle number jumps up to 180. And simply put, I went out and I said, okay, at this level, what are my taxes? And then what's my surplus going into the, these accounts? So. In the pre-tax account, I kept it all in the same bucket. I said, all right, we're gonna max out the 401k pre-tax. We're gonna get a company match and all these numbers are gonna go up. Now I used market returns. So you could see that here. And that's just, again, a function of uh, clicking on this and using the market history button if you wanna do that. And then you can see the tax effect numbers over here. Um, cash flows, again, very simple on this. We're going 150,000. We've got 37,700 in total tax. Spendable income of 112, leaves 40 left over. We're putting 20 of that in the 401k. When we go back to our accounts, you can see here, this is where that excess is going into just a savings. This savings, again, to keep the tax calculations simpler, I put it at a 3% tax-free. So I didn't put it in a taxable account because I didn't want to deal with all the changing tax calculations that come with a taxable account. I just said, all right, this is just money that we would, we would simulate or assume is maybe in a uh, cash value policy, or again, just to keep the tax numbers simple. So what that means, out here in retirement, on the pre-tax side, we would need to pull out 218000 in the first year of retirement at age 66, and then the taxes on that are 38631 Now, I calculated that, so I'm going to jump to Excel. So again, a little bit more context, I'll blow this up. This is going back to, okay, pre-tax versus Roth. And if we use all the same rules today, 30 years into the future, you know, what are we looking like? So over here, this is the 150,000 income. We've got a standard deduction. We've got to pay our social security and Medicare taxes. We've got our federal and our Michigan. So that's how I calculated all these numbers and came up to a 27.8. Down here, these are the bracket sizes, where all the brackets are for 10%, 22%, 24%, et cetera. And I said, all right, let's go 3% inflation for 30 years. So that means the current 10% bracket, if we come back here to our pop-up, just for context, let's go to single. Our current 10% bracket is at $11,000. In 30 years, with 3% inflation, it's gonna be 26,700. And then the 12% is 44 today, in 30 years at 3% inflation, it's gonna be 108. That's how I came up with the future tax rate to come up with what I put into the, the spending game system. There's some more details here, but we'll, we'll, we'll stick with spending game for the moment. And then I said, all right, we still have our inflation adjusted income that we have to populate. So 72,000 today, 30 years into the future is going to be 180,000. At the end of the day, all the way to age 90, we still have $463,000 left over. So we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. We lived through life expectancy with enough money, right? The problem in, with that, in my opinion, is it's a static environment and taxes have never been static, ever. Like if you just look back, I mean, there's a couple of tools in the software that'll show you all the tax law changes since 1970 and it's, it's astronomical. They're always changing taxes. So to use it in a static environment, I think is tough, but we're doing it. The second option, well, what if we did the Roth? All the variables are the same, $150,000 income, same income tax rate. The thing that changed is I put the company match, which is still pre-tax, in the pre-tax account, and then I put the same 20,000 in the Roth. Now, some people might argue with whether that makes sense. Um, I think it makes sense because we had extra cash flow 
that we were just simply putting in this savings. So in that first year in the pre-tax bucket, we were putting 20,000 right here, and now we're only putting 14. Well, the main reason for that is we're choosing to pay taxes. So it's reducing the amount of lifestyle that we have in our available savings buckets. So now by doing that, we come back out here, same 72,000 adjusted for inflation, same 180,000 in retirement, but now over here on our withdrawals, and I'm gonna do a comparison in the PEM too, so you'll get to see this, but I like to show the numbers and then show the picture. So we're pulling 65,000 out from our pre-tax company match, and we're pulling 120,000 out from our Roth, so we're only needing 186 to produce 180 because we've got such a predominant Roth distribution. And then we get to retirement and we still have money left over, but we have more money left over. So the, the moral of some of these stories are, if we go to the visualizations here, so up here, visualizations, I'm going to compare to a scenario, we're going to compare, I'm on the Roth, I'm going to compare to the pre-tax, get rid of some of these other things, and we're going to put our values at the bottom, they're already there. So let me blow this up. So all our numbers are in all our tanks, right? So you can click through this and see, I'm just gonna click through 10 years real quick. Our lifestyle is the same. That's the number one thing you want to remember with spending game is you always want your lifestyle to be the same. We have paid more taxes just in that single year, in the 10th year, 7,500 more taxes. And so far we've paid 72,000 more in taxes in that first 10 years. Go out another 10 years, we're paying $10,000 more that year in taxes. We've paid $162,000 more in taxes at that point. So again, we're paying more taxes along the way by using the Roth. But the differential comes into play when you get to retirement and you take those distributions. So then we go another 10 years to 65. So we have effectively paid $282,000 more in tax from age 30 to age 65 by using the Roth. Right? So that might scare a lot of people. But the distribution is where the magic starts to happen. So if we go out five years, that $200,000, $250,000 differential is already down to 107. We go out another five years, we're now $100,000 ahead in total taxes paid by using the Roth strategy at age 75. And then you go all the way to life expectancy. We're 1.1 million ahead on estate value and we're $863,000 less in taxes by using the Roth strategy. So, and that's in a static environment. And I think, who in the room thinks taxes are gonna go down in the future? <laughs> There's not a single hand up, just to confirm. And so if in a static environment, if you've got somebody that's got a rank and file corporate job and they're using traditional retirement plans, yes, you can do all the other stuff in there, but showing them this in the power of the math will open up the world to show them what else you can show them and what other diversification tools you can bring to the table with that.